In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will take a look at moment of inertia, wherein we are going to learn about moment of inertia of composite figures and moment of inertia by integration. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. We will first learn about moment of inertia of composite figures. A composite area is a combination of regular plane areas. To find the moment of inertia of a composite figure about any axis, we use the following steps. Consider a shaded composite figure whose moment of inertia about x x axis is to be found. Step 1. We will divide the composite figure into regular parts. In the given example, we can divide the composite figure into a rectangle, triangle, semicircle and circle. Step 2. Find MI of each part about the given axis. In the above example, we have to find IX1, IX2, IX3 and IX4. Step 3. Sub step 1. Consider each part separately. If the axis passes through the centroid of the part, use direct formulae discussed in the previous topic. In the above example for the circle, its centroid G4 lies on the axis XX. Therefore, I XX4 is equal to pi R raised to 4 upon 4. Sub step 2. For rectangle, triangle, quarter circle, and semicircle, if the axis passes through the sides, we have ready expressions for moment of inertia as discussed in the previous topic. In the above case of the rectangle, the axis XX passes through its sides. Hence, I XX1 equals BD cube upon 3. Also, the axis XX passes through the base of the triangle. Hence, I XX2 equals BH cube upon 12. Similarly, the axis XX passes through the base of the semicircle. Hence, I XX3 equals pi R raised to 4 upon 8. Step 4. If the axis does not pass through the centroid, nor any ready expression is applicable, then we use the parallel axis theorem. Step 5. The MI of the entire composite figure is the sum of MI of the individual parts. In the above example, IXX is equal to IX1 plus IX2 plus IX3 minus IX4. Consider the following problem. Calculate the MI of the composite figure about the X and Y axis. We can divide the composite figure into two parts. Part 1, rectangle, and part 2, semicircle. We will now mark the centroids of both the rectangle and the semicircle. The centroid of the semicircle will be at a distance of 4R upon 3 pi from the side of the rectangle. We will first find the moment of inertia about the XX axis. For the rectangle, we can directly find the moment of inertia by using the formula B into D cube by 3. On substituting the values, we get I XX1 equals 1666.67 cm raised to 4. For the semicircle, since there is no standard formula readily available, we will find the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis of the semicircle and then use the parallel axis theorem to find the moment of inertia about the XX axis. We thus find I XX2 equals 1227.18 cm raised to 4. Now in order to find the moment of inertia of the composite figure about the XX axis, we will directly add up the moment of inertia of the two parts about the XX axis, that is, I XX1 and I XX2. Thus, we calculate I XX to be equal to 2893.85 cm raised to 4. We will now find the moment of inertia of the composite figure about the YY axis. For the rectangle, we can directly find the moment of inertia by using the formula B into D cube by 3. On substituting the values, we get IYY1 equals 
416.67 cm raised to 4. For the semicircle, since there is no standard formula readily available, we will find the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis of the semicircle and then use the parallel axis theorem to find moment of inertia about the yy axis. We thus find I yy2 is equal to 2060.45 cm raised to 4. Now in order to find the moment of inertia of the composite figure about the yy axis, we will directly add up the moment of inertia of the two parts about the yy axis, that is iyy1 and iyy2. Thus, we calculate iyy to be equal to 2477.12 cm raised to 4. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Now, we will learn the method to find moment of inertia using integration. To find the moment of inertia of areas bounded by curves, we use the integration approach. Consider the area bounded by the curve y equals fx shown alongside. The moment of inertia of the area about the xx axis can be found by taking an elemental strip of width dy parallel to the xx axis located at a distance y from the xx axis and then using the integration of y square into dA where dA is equal to x into dy. The moment of inertia of the area about the yy axis can be found by taking an elemental strip of width dx parallel to the yy axis located at a distance x from the yy axis and then using the integration of x square into dA where dA is equal to y into dx. Sometimes we need to find the moment of inertia of an area about both axes. We find it convenient to use an elemental strip parallel to the yy axis in order to calculate moment of inertia about xx axis. In such a situation, we use this formula one third integral of y cube into dx. The following problem will help us to understand the method to find the moment of inertia of an area by using integration. Calculate the moment of inertia of the shaded area about xx axis. Let us now find the moment of inertia about the xx axis, that is, ixx. Take a horizontal elemental strip of width dy located at a distance y from the xx axis. In order to find the value of k, we will substitute the coordinate 6, 5 in the equation of the curve y is equal to kx square. Thus, we find k to be equal to 5 upon 36. Using this formula, we will find mi of the area about xx axis. We will first substitute dA is equal to 6 minus x into dy. Since the y coordinate is bounded between the region 0 to 5, we will use these as the limits for integration under dy. On substituting the value of x from the equation of the curve and then evaluating the integral, we obtain. Now, on substituting the limits of the integral, we calculate moment of inertia about xx axis to be 35.71 meters raised to 4. Let's have a quick review of what we've studied in this lecture. We first learned the method to find the moment of inertia of a composite figure. A composite area is a combination of regular plane areas. Then we learned the steps to find the moment of inertia of a composite area that is dividing the composite area into smaller regular plane areas, finding their moment of inertia and then using summation to find the moment of inertia of the composite figure. Then, we learned about moment of inertia by integration. To find the moment of inertia of areas bounded by curves, we use the integration approach. Consider the area under the curve bounded by the equation y equals fx. The moment of inertia of the area about the xx axis can be found by taking an elemental strip of width dy parallel to the xx axis located at a distance y from the xx axis and then using the integration of y square into dA where dA is equal to x into dy. The moment of inertia of the area about the yy axis can be found by taking an elemental strip of width dx 
parallel to the yy axis located at a distance x from the yy axis and then using the integration of x square into dA where dA is equal to y into dx.